Welcome, I'm Dr. Marilyn Glassberg from the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. An approach to connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease includes a targeted history, detection of specific autoantibodies, multidisciplinary teams, and management. Interstitial lung disease and connective tissue disease is very common but unpredictable. The prevalence of ILD varies greatly from 70 to 90 percent in patients with systemic sclerosis to 4 to 68 percent with rheumatoid arthritis and on down to the mixed connective tissue disease. We know that these patients develop interstitial lung disease, we just don't know when in the course of the disease they develop it. A targeted history, as we mentioned, is essential in the initial identification of an underlying connective tissue disease. Often we see patients that come in with the disease already diagnosed, in other words, the connective tissue disease, but sometimes we don't. They're referred for an abnormal CT scan, and we have to figure out what other things could be causing the problem and their symptoms, which are often the symptoms we're very familiar with, cough and shortness of breath. So we often ask them, how long have you had your symptoms? Have you had dry eyes, dry mouth, mouth ulcers, or problems with your teeth? Any excessive hair loss? Any swelling in your hands or changes in the skin on your hands? Any rashes? Any joint stiffness or swelling? These are all really important questions because the problems that are associated with eyes, mouth, hair loss, digits, rashes, are really those main symptoms associated with connective tissue disease. The major autoantibodies associated with connective tissue disease are shown here. On systemic sclerosis associated disease, there are several antibodies. The one most common though, associated with lung disease, is SCL70, the anti-topoisomerase listed at the top. This indeed is most commonly associated with interstitial lung disease. And as you go down the list, you see that there are others that are associated with other of these autoimmune or connective tissue associated diseases. Multidisciplinary teams really collaborate on these patients because there are no approved treatments for any of these diseases at the current time. And so we really need help from all of our colleagues to do a cooperative management. The management, the common approaches, if we have a flow sheet of this, is always going to start with the immunosuppressive for now. Uh, there have never actually been any randomized trials, but we'd start with corticosteroids and then go to the more steroid sparing agents such as mycophenolate. There is certainly a potential role of antifibrotic therapies. These are the trials that have been done with the two antifibrotics. Everybody wants to know, is there a role, since these are fibrotic lung diseases, for these two approved agents, remembering that they're currently only approved, perfenidone or nintetinib, for patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The trials are listed under perfenidone are ones that have used or are currently using perfenidone. SLS3 is a trial enrolling with uh, perfenidone for patients with systemic sclerosis. TRAIL is a trial enrolling for patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And then there is RELIEF, which is a non-IPF lung fibrosis population uh, looking at the role of perfenidone in their management. Census, a trial that was published recently, had some very promising results uh, with patients on stable doses of mycophenolate with the addition of nintetinib. It's not approved yet for standard of care use, but very exciting new data. And then the other uh, trials that are listed here, also another in systemic sclerosis, as well as the InBuild trial. This is a trial enrolling patients with all fibrosing lung diseases that is a pr progressive nature. So many of these patients may be patients who will have chronic hypersensitivity, pneumonitis as well. So although we have these exciting trials being done with antifibrotic agents, none of them are ready for prime time yet because they are not FDA approved. But these are changing times in how we approach patients with connective tissue interstitial lung disease, and I think we will see some new agents in the future.